Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. All the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't we stand up on our feet this morning? Uh, how many came ready to worship the king? He is worthy to be praised, isn't he? I mean, has God, has God been good Amen. to us? Has God been good? Yes. Hallelujah. My mic on? Has God been good to yes. us? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, he has. God yes. has uh, quickened us. He's strengthened us. He's enabled us to be here today. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and, and he's faithful. And I'm here to decree that today, that God is faithful. Say that right now. God, God is, is faithful. faithful. What does that mean? That means he's dependable. He'll never let you down. You. He always comes through. Thank he has not forgotten about us. Yeah. His hand is upon us. Amen. Amen. He is faithful. Amen. He's so faithful. And for that, he is worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Yeah, so uh, let's just yes. worship him this morning. All those that are joining us online this morning, we thank you for being with us. Uh, get your family together. Uh, make sure you have your Bible, something to take notes, and prepare your hearts to worship the Lord this Amen. morning. Amen. Amen. For he truly is worthy to be praised. Yes. Amen. 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 He's done so many wonderful things, and, uh, and he's not done. He's just right. getting started. Thank you, Jesus. He's just getting started. Amen. Amen. So uh, we just thank him and worship him. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Everybody okay this morning? Uh, yes. I'm a little yeah. tired. I don't know. Yeah. Bring the sacrifice of praise. Amen. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, For the praises of man, I will never ever stand. For the kingdoms of this world. Nobody else, no other man, only God yes, amen. is worthy to be praised. Amen. amen. He's our source. He is our source. Amen. See that? God, you are my source. God, you are my source. My trust is in you. My my trust trust is in you. Everything else can let me down. That's right. Everything else but you down. will never, never, ever, never, let, ever, let, me ever down. let me down. Yes. Never let me down. Amen. Glory to God.
In his house. He's working on your house yes, right now. Glory hallelujah. to God. Thank you, Lord Amen. Jesus. Oh, we magnify you, Thank God. You, you are so good. So good. So good. So good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. None compares to you. Yes, Amen.
Nothing, nothing, nothing compares to your glory, Father. Amen. The glory that is to be revealed in us. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let this be your declaration. How our life song sings to him. Amen. As God saved you and healed you and changed your life. The Lord said to me that everywhere you go, people need to know what you believe. Yes. Everywhere you go, people need to know what you believe. Yes. And if they don't know what we believe, then we're not doing our job. Right. They need to know everywhere we go exactly what we believe. Yes. Amen. And then he said, and your life needs to confirm it. Your actions need to confirm it what you believe, what you believe. And uh, we get that part right, we'll start sharing what we believe. <laughs> Amen? Amen? It's important, it's important. Hallelujah. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was lost, but now
Make that your heart cry. Let my life song sing. You, oh, I surrender it all, God. Let my life song sing. You. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We magnify you in this place. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We lay our lives down for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Just worship him. Lift your voices to him. Tell him. Tell him what your heart. Tell him with your heart right now what you're doing, what you want to do, how you want to follow hard after him. Hallelujah. Father, you can count on me. Hallelujah. Him. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 The Spirit of the Lord is in this place this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Yield to Him. Yield to Him. Yield to Him. Yield to Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is wanting to do things in our lives. Yield to Him this morning. He's full of mercy, full of long suffering, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. Oh, you're so patient with us.
no trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. We, we don't surrender because of trust. And the Lord wants us to trust him. He's been patient. He's been long-suffering. He's been waiting. Don't believe the lie. Like my mom just said, that uh, there's no use. That's what the devil wants us to believe. There's no use. I've been here before. And I'm sure I'll mess up again. And you very well may mess up again. We all do, but it's a heart. It's a heart after God, and it's trusting Him. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. When you trust Him, you'll surrender to Him. When you trust Him, you'll surrender to Him, and you won't trust Him until you know Him. We need to consecrate our hearts to the Lord. I believe the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us individually today in this place right now the anointing is here and uh and that's to help us to strengthen us to cause us to yield to what he wants to do in our lives friends there's no denying we're living in the last of the end times god needs us now more than he ever did and he has not forgotten us but he needs us to trust him to surrender to him to yield 100% of who you are to him. Every bit, every bit. We all know the areas that we hold back and that we want to keep because of lack of trust, lack of fear, whatever it may be. God wants all of us. And when you give him all, he's able to shape you into what he wants you to be. And his ways are so much better than ours. His plans are so much greater than and fulfilling and rewarding than our own. Trust Him this morning. That's why the song is so important. Let my life song sing to you, Father. Glory to God. God is good, right? Mm -hmm. While we were just worshiping the Lord there and really just praising him, you guys may be seated. Um, 
I just kept getting an image of Paul and Silas at that midnight hour, right? That praise breaks yokes. Praise breaks bondages. Amen. You know, sometimes we get so wrapped up in the things that are coming against us that all we can do is praise. And guess what? That's okay. You know, God's no respecter of persons. Paul and Silas in jail for doing exactly what God wanted them to be doing, right? And in that midnight hour, you know, beat up, banged up, busted, what did they start doing? They just started praising God. And we all know what happened, right? They were set free, glory to God. So when that's all you've got to do sometimes, you know, the enemy's coming hard against you, even when you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing, just start praising God, amen? Amen. So um, before we get started with our one announcement that we have today, uh, do we have any friends, new friends visiting us for the first time? If you're here for the first time, praise God, we're glad you're here. Um, the ushers want to get a little welcome package or a little welcome brochure in your hand. And if you could, fill out the uh, contact information and drop it in the offering bucket as it goes by. Um, so here's our one announcement. September 13th, we're going to be having our church picnic. Yay. No, COVID's not coming against our church picnic, right? Glory to God. So we are going to do things a little differently this year. In years past, you guys have always bought food. We've gotten some other stuff, and we've kind of done it that way. We're changing it around this year. We're making it easier for everyone. So we actually have somebody coming in to professionally cook for us. Um, so you don't have to bring any food unless you want to bring maybe some side dishes or a dessert. Um, there's also going to be an ice cream truck here. So we got that going on. Um, little different that we're doing is there's going to be a cost involved because we're doing everything plus the ice cream truck. So it's $12 a person. Next week, I'm going to put a sign-up sheet out by the reception desk. So just, you know, just fill in your name. You know, we'll collect pay. We'll start collecting payments next week, too, just so we know how many people to plan for. And we're going to have a lot, you know, burgers, dogs, sausage, cheesesteaks, you know, all that stuff. So um, this way you guys don't even have to think about it. You know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll set a time. We'll get started after service, whatever time we set. And then we'll have the ice cream truck for dessert and we'll be good to go. Amen. Glory to God. Um, my, Brother Mike Brenner has a testimony he'd like to share. So we want Brother Michael to come up here and share his testimony. Okay, here we go. Five years ago, in July, July 28th, as a matter of fact, that's the date. Remember that date, it's important. I was sitting in a wheelchair in my house after major ankle reconstruction surgery, and the sheriff knocked on my door with an eviction. They foreclosed on our house, and we were homeless. That was the worst time of my life. I was actually not even contemplating that I was going to commit suicide, to be straight and honest with you. God mysteriously, miraculously, somehow <laughs> provided us a house to rent that suited our needs, three bedrooms in a good neighborhood. <clears throat> Rent's pretty high, and we struggled. Through that, I was faithful in my giving, and coming to church on a regular basis. <clears throat> we scrimped and saved, scrimped and saved. And in the beginning of this year, we decided that it's time for us to get back. God's been restoring us, and we're going to buy a house. I talked to Pastor Frank. I had zero credit. It didn't even come up as a score, nothing. I couldn't get a credit card. I applied to like six different things. I finally mysteriously got one in the mail. And within three months, my credit was from zero to like 770. <laughs> so we were able to get a house. We looked and we looked and we looked with Jody for months. Frustrated, aggravated, because you didn't get it or they wanted this, they wanted that. So much going on. I started doubting my faith and going, like Pastor Frank is teaching about, is this Christian thing really working? So, but 
I'm being honest, you know. So in the middle of the night, through my lack of sleep, which I don't sleep at all, the Holy Spirit said to me, call your landlord. Call the landlord. I'm not going to call the landlord. I'm not going to call the landlord. So I obeyed. I don't know why I did, but I obeyed. I called the landlord. Would you be interested in selling us the house? He said, I never thought about selling the house. He says, but you guys have been faithful. He said, guys, you've been great tenants. I'm going to sell you the house. <laughs> so some things went on behind the scenes, and I'm not really going to get involved out with price and negotiation and stuff. But we were able to buy the house that we were renting. We didn't have to move. We didn't have to worry about what's wrong with the house. We didn't have to worry about we knew the neighborhood. So God has been faithful. He's restored yes. me. Yes. He's restored Hallelujah. my family. He's reconciled us financially. Hallelujah. Amen. And what I wanted to say and why I wanted to say this was the date of our closing on the house was July 28, 2020. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Five years to the day. You could say coincidence. You could say you might believe. You might. Uh, there's no way. No way. That's no crazy. way. God worked this all through. Yes, he did time. it for me. He could do it for everyone else in here, Hallelujah. and He will. Thank Hallelujah. you very much. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. That is. Mike, Amen. now you got to sing, Mike. Amen. That is a fantastic testimony. Why, why do we share these kind of things? Because God is not a respecter of persons. God did not love Joseph or Abraham or Mike more than he loves you or me. God is a rewarder of those that will diligently seek him, follow hard after him, surrender to him, hunger and thirst for him. He will reward you He's a rewarder, not a taker. That's He's a right. giver. Yeah. He's a giver. And, uh, and, and so we rejoice with him because that's good news to me because if God can do that for Mike, that God can do that for me. God can do that for you. Whatever it is that you're believing yeah. God for, he is your source. Get your mind off the how. It doesn't matter how. We're not, right. We don't need to know how. We need to follow him. He is our source. He's our source. God has multiple channels that he uses here on this earth. He's not printing money in heaven. What you need is here. And he's got channels. If we'll look to him as our source and we'll obey when he says to do something, we'll get exactly what we need at the right time. The challenge is, uh, you know, waiting and being patient. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It's not always logical. I look at the, st I've been studying the story of Joseph. None of that story makes sense to the mind. That's right. Not one no. aspect of it. That's right. Yet Joseph pushed through. He remained faithful with what he was given. Those who were faithful with little, and not little, little amount, with what you have. Yes. With what you have. If you're faithful with what you have right now, God will give you more. If we cannot be faithful with what we have right now, and I mean faithful to trust him, to believe him, then what right do we have to think that we'll get more? Is God withholding it from us? No, we're not in a position to receive it. Mm -hmm. Joseph right. remained faithful. So uh, that was a good segue into the offering, Mike. Thank you. Um, right. The Lord put some things on my heart this morning, and I talked to Pastor and asked him if I could share and, 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 uh, and receive the offering this morning. Uh, God wants to be your source. He wants to be your source. We limit him by not believing him. Isn't it a shame that we limit a limitless God? We do. How do we do that, you say? Pastor, how do we do that? We limit an unlimited God by our unbelief and our misplaced trust. We cannot trust ourselves. 
We cannot put our faith in human beings or any other resource or any other avenue. Not your job, not your in-laws, not your outlaws, not your friends, your neighbors, your country, not even yourself. Your trust needs to be 100% in God. And when we trust him, he brings to us what we need. Trust and obedience. Trust and obedience. And it's not, and so people get so irritated at this message of increase. And I don't understand why. I guess if they just want to stay, barely get by and poor, well then we feel bad for you. But that's not God. God is not barely get by. No. We have an unlimited father who wants to give you unlimited things. But he needs to see you're faithful before he does that. And if we can't be faithful with $5, we're not going to be faithful with $500 or $5,000. You know, people say, well, if I just had more, I'd give more. No, you wouldn't. You'd give exactly what you're giving now. It's faithful with what you have. The Bible says to bring the tithes into We're, we're not giving to the church. We are sowing and investing in the kingdom of God. Yes. And if we'll be obedient to do that, friends, this is not a pitch to get money from anybody in here. Because whether anybody in this room ever gave $1, God will bless this place beyond what we can imagine That's or think. Hallelujah. Because men, people are not our source. No. God is our source. God uses people. And he uses them as a channel. Because when you invite God into your business, God moves on other people to help you. Does everyone understand that? Yeah. This is becoming more and more and more real to me. Um, the more I see this, the Lord spoke this to me this morning. And, I, and I'm telling you this because we're going to receive our tithes and offering this morning. Uh, and, and, and an opportunity to invest. And if you do it through uh, electronic means... Uh, online, texting, or you use an envelope, however you do it, uh, we need to sow in faith. We need to sow in obedience to what God has said. You know, above and beyond. We know that he says to bring the tenth into, into the kingdom of God. And then above and beyond that is our offerings and our sowing. But the Lord said this to me this morning, and I'm telling you this because we're going to receive ours, but the Lord put all my heart to receive another offering for uttermost ministries in the South Pacific. Now, we may never even know, we may not even know where the South Pacific is on a map, let alone ever go there. But as we sow, there are people that I know personally that you guys have met that, that are over there preaching the gospel that I'm preaching right now to these native people who don't even know what Christmas is. And they're receiving salvation. They're coming into the kingdom. That is reaching, that is just, uh, when we sow into those things, the Lord put it on my heart. If you will sow into missions and those kind of things, God will see to it. And, and this is what he told me this morning. And I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to get through this uh, as fast as I can, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. But, and, I, and I wrote all this down because uh, this is what he said to me. And he, and he instructed me to share this. And, of course, I asked pastor before I you know, would just come up and do this. And he said, absolutely, by all means. Uh, the Lord said to me that he, that he is, and this is how he talks to me, that he's in business. He's in business. Amen. He said, you know, I have a business. I said, okay. He said, you're my employee. I'm the employer. He says, I have a business. I have a restoration business. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm a master restorer Hallelujah. is what I do. He said, I am in the restoration business, Eddie. Hallelujah. That's what he said to me. I said, okay. He said, and you're my employer. He says, if you will invest in my business interests, what are his business interests? As a, rest, as a restorer, as restoration, he said he is in the restoration business. That is his business. And he said, if you will invest in my business interests, which is the homeless, the poor, the sick, the destitute, the confused, depressed, orphans, widows, people who are down and out. 
If you will invest, those are my interests. Invest in my interests. Be faithful with his. Be faithful with mine. And I will give you yours. That's what he said to me. And he said, and when I sit down and I reconcile the books, I notice what an asset you've been to this company. This, he's not just talking to me. This is, was for me to share with you. When I sit down and I reconcile through the books and I'm like, I look at my son and I'm like, you see what he did? You see how much he did for this company? This is how he talks to me. I see what an asset you've been, how you've invested and brought great increase to my business. He, bring, he said, I'm going to bring you in. I'm going to make you sit down and I'm beginning to tell you how much I appreciate your diligence and helping my business to flourish. And then he said, I'm going to say to you, what is it that you want and desire? Anything you want or desire, consider it yours. Don't look at a price. Don't look at any of that. Anything you want or desire will be yours. Anything, friends. What's anything mean? Anything. Anything. Start thinking big. Start thinking big. Is anything too big for God? No. Not at all. He's not going to rain houses and cars out of heaven. It's here. It's in this realm that we live in. If we will invest in his restoration business, he said, when I reconcile, I am a rewarder to those who will diligently follow hard after me. Amen. Anything you want. Amen. If money was no object, if money was never a consideration, anything you want and desire, he said, I will give to you because you're an asset. Consider it, as he said to me, consider it a bonus. Consider it a bonus because I see your faithfulness. Friends, God wants us to trust him that way. He wants us to sow. He wants us to be generous. He wants the church to be full of resources. Wow. He wants to see a, a, a facility that can house the homeless people. That's not the government and our city officials' job. That's the job of the church. That is the job of the church. It's not for the government to take care of. It's for God's people to take care of his own. Amen. Why is someone else taking care of his kids? There are brothers and sisters. He said to prove me this day if there would not be meat in my house. And then he brought me to Colossians. And I looked at Matthew 6.33, which we know. Over and over and over do we know that. Seek That's ye right. first the kingdom. Oh Seek ye first yes. my interests. Yes. My interests. My interests. Don't look at. Don't you think, he said to me, don't you think, don't you know that if I know that you're going to invest in my business, I will always make sure you have plenty to invest. Amen. If I know and I trust that you're going to take your resources that I've given you and put them back into my restoration company, guess what, friend? You're going to have everything you need. But the guy who sits in his office and wastes time, does he ever get a bonus? Does he ever come and get a, an, a, a, an audience with the boss and says, hey, look at all I've been doing? He's going to say, no, you've been lazy. You haven't done a thing. You haven't been faithful with one thing. You're actually looking for ways to not have to get out and do something. Friend, that cannot be us. That cannot be us. If we want the provision that God has designed for us, yeah. we have got to get on his plan. We have got to begin to invest in his interests. I'm not telling you this to get a nickel out of you. That is not the point. I'm telling you this because God is speaking to your heart. And I'm here to tell you to trust him and obey him. Whatever it is, if he tells you to invest the X amount, don't look at how, well, I, I mean, then how am I going to pay this? Does he not know what we need? Yes, Are amen. we sowing it into his company? Then he will see to it that your interests as his employee are going to be met. Yes. Are we going to be an asset? Or are we going to be a liability? Anything you desire, anything you want, not just your needs. He knows what we have need. Your wants 
and your desires. Proverbs says that he fills our treasury. That means your accounts. God does, not people. People don't do that for me. People could let me down. If, mine, if, if what I have is tied up in this realm, we know what the market can do. We know great companies that can fold like this. But if my source is God, I will never have to fear not having what I need. My needs will be met. I will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that can endure during droughts and hot times and thin times. My roots go deep and deep to the water, to the living well. I will always have what I need. This church will always thrive. Always, because we're doing what the master says. We are investing what he's given us back into his company. Amen. And in doing so, he meets all of our needs. I'm going to read Colossians chapter 1, and we're going to receive the offering. Amen. This is so important. This is how we increase. This is how we increase. The devil hates this kind of talk. He wants you to hold on to that last little nickel you have just in case. You know what that just in case is? So that he can rob it from you. Because that's what he wants to do. He's a liar. He's got nothing to do with what we have. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Yes. So let me read this to you. Colossians. <clears throat> Where is this? All right, here we go. <sighs> Glory to God. Colossians chapter 1. You know, this is a prayer. If you've been coming to faith and healing class, we pray the Ephesian and the Colossian prayer every day, right? But, uh, but this is uh, Colossians chapter 1, starting in verse 9. And I'm reading this from the Message Bible. And this is what it says. And I really want to look at verse 12. But it says, be assured that from the first day we heard of you, we haven't stopped praying for you. Asking God to give you wise minds and spirits attuned to his will. And so acquire a thorough understanding of the ways in which God works. We pray that you'll live well for the master, making him proud of you as you work hard in his orchard. As you work hard in his business. Again, what kind of business does he have? Restoration. Restoration. We had a neighbor that lived across the street from us who he had a business. It was called Dip and Strip, remember? And it was, he used to restore old furniture. God is a restorer. I was an old beat up rocking chair at one point. And now I'm a throne. No, I'm just kidding. I'm only kidding. But God has restored us. God has restored us. He's in the restoration business. He's restoring people. He wants our resources to go to restore people, hearts, minds, lives, brokenness. A thorough understanding. We pray that you will live well for the master, making him proud of you as you work hard in his orchard. As you learn more and more how God works, you will learn how to do your work. We pray that you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul, not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength that God gives. It is strength that endures the unendurable and spills over into joy, thanking the Father who makes us strong enough to take part in every bright and beautiful thing that he has for us. He's made us partakers of the inheritance. Of the inheritance. He's rescued us from dead end alleys and dark dungeons, and he set us up in the kingdom of the son he loves so much. The son who got us out of the pit we were in, got rid of the sins we were doomed to keep repeating. Friends, that's the God that we serve. That's the God who wants to be your all in all. Make him, give him that place. Don't trust in, you know, the song, Psalm. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will remember and trust in the name of the Lord our God. That's who we trust. That's a source that never dries up. That's the gift that keeps on giving and giving and giving. And the more you give, the more you will increase. Yes. Sow it in faith. Amen. Give it in obedience. Trust him. Amen. 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 Everybody get a, a, an envelope that they need. Remember, we're going to receive... Another offering after this one for Uttermost Ministries. 
for, for the uttermost, if you're giving with an envelope, then put missions on it. If you're giving uh, online, there's a missions thing as well. But it's going to be a second offering, so Tom will know exactly what to do with the second one. It's all going to uttermost ministries. And, you know, go on the Internet. We have given them an offering before. They are ministering to people that we will never even see. We didn't even know people lived over there. But there's human life that are receiving salvation. It's the greatest thing ever. And this woman, Patty, and, and her husband, Kelly, who, who went home to be with the Lord, I graduated from Rhema with them. Great people, love God, called to the South Pacific. They got Rhema schools in Fiji, South Pacific, Samoa. It, it's unbelievable the things that they're doing, that they're doing. And they trust God every step of the way. Friend, I'm excited because we are a channel. I don't know what they're believing God for right now, but they trust God. I have no idea. I didn't talk to them. They didn't tell me to do this. The Spirit of God did. But as we're obedient, we become the channel that God is going to use yes. to meet their need. Yes. God is their source. And God's using us, this church. We're sowing into that. We can expect a harvest. And by doing that, that is opening the door for God to use somebody else as a channel to give into your life. That's how the increase keeps going. And who gets the glory and who does all this? The yeah. master restorer, God, yeah, God the Father. Yes. He's the source. He's the source. Glory to God. Let's pray. We're going to receive this offering. Whew, glory to God. And then we're going to receive the other offering for uttermost ministries and it's all going to them they just started a new rhema school and i forgot how many students they have but they, i i get their you know i support them personally as the lord directs and it's uh it's like being there it's like being there and uh and, and so expect increase you're sowing in faith expect amen. something amen? amen let's pray heavenly father we thank you for the opportunity lord we're grateful for your word for truth father the truth that makes us free Father, as we give, we know that you open up the windows of heaven and you pour blessings into our life, Father. As we invest in your business, you take care of our interests as we serve yours. And Father, we do it joyfully, yes, willing Lord. to do it, glad to do it, quick to do it. Yes. We trust you. We trust you. And then when we write down what we want and desire, you say, no problem. We know what an asset you've been to this business and to this company. We take great pleasure in the prosperity of our, our employees, <laughs> our saints, our children. Amen. Glory to God. Father, may you be glorified. May you be honored in this. I speak blessings over the lives of all those who sow today. I thank you that every need of theirs is met. Every yes. debt is reduced and, elim and eliminated. Increase is coming into our lives Amen. as the ministering spirits are working on our behalf, yes. causing it to come. You yes. are our source. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive the offering. I don't even know if I could sing a song. I'll talk a little bit more because then we got to receive another offering. Praise God. Uh, let's do, uh, let's do this. For a place to land and I couldn't find it. So <laughs> sometimes you have to hit the emergency brake. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So we're going to receive the second school. offering. It's missions. The whole thing is going to uttermost ministries. Great, great seed to sow, to great soil to sow your seed. They're doing incredible things. And release faith as you sow this, that not only it's going to produce for you, but that it does produce for that ministry, that more and more souls in that South Pacific are going to come to know the saving knowledge of our God and Father, and he'll meet your need according to his riches and glory. 
Amen. Everybody got their offering ready? Father, we thank you for this one. Bless it. Multiply yes, Lord. it. Yes, Make Lord. it go to good things as they sow it over there. Yes. Bless them. Meet every one of their needs, Lord. And in doing so, we release faith that we expect, Father, for you to continue to meet our needs and, and, and take care of our interests as we do it in faith, willingly glad to do it Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. message in 30 minutes. Yeah, I'll just have to be like Pastor Eddie. He was going to preach next week, but he might not now. But uh, I knew I was in trouble when he called me 830 this morning. He said I was praying and the Lord told me. I said, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Anyway, how many have your Bibles with you? Amen. God is good. You know, as he was talking about that, I, as I've been studying along the lines of, of what we're talking about, uh, tired of living from day to day, hand to hand, mouth to mouth, you know, hand to mouth, and uh, week to week. Uh, God really, really, re I am more convinced of this than anything I've ever been convinced of in my life. God wants to bless us for one reason and one reason only, and that is to give. If you look at Acts chapter 10, verse 38, this isn't my message. I don't know how far I'm going to get in my message, but in any event, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. And how many people are familiar with that verse of Scripture? Amen. All right. You could probably quote it all, right? I just was, as I was studying this, I was reading something from uh, someone else, and uh, 10:38, and and then and we always talk about this about the anointing of God and so forth. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, and He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Now, man, we zero in on healing all that are oppressed of the devil. And we just think the doing good part is healing all that were oppressed of the devil, and it certainly is. But when you look up that word doing good, you find out something really interesting. It's the Greek word for philanthropist. Jesus was a philanthropist. Jesus not only went around laying hands on the sick, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, Jesus' ministry entailed getting the gospel out with money. He had a treasure. You know, Pastor Reddy said it before. He had a treasure. So Jesus' ministry had to have money. And his money was taking care of the poor, feeding the poor, helping people. So the whole objective of us in, in this finance thing, and a lot of people get real upset about it because there are ministers that abuse it. There's no doubt about it, you know, but that's, be, guess what? That's not your problem. That's between them and God. They're going to stand before God one day and have to answer for the uh, misuse of, of the money. We're going to have to stand before God, and he, we're going to have to be responsible for what we did with our money. So don't worry about these other ministers that you read about all the time. That's their problem. That's not your problem. You're not God. And it shouldn't affect you either. In, in your giving, and the main sole purpose of giving, of financial prosperity, is to be able to give and get the gospel out to a lost and dying world. 
Listen, you look out um, amongst us, what we're seeing today, the rioting, this, that, and everything else. The world needs the gospel. And I'm convinced. I don't, honest, I don't worry about anything. I don't care. If God's got to bring a St. Bernard with a bag of cash, I'm fine with that. Because if I need it, he knows I need it. So I don't have to worry about it. I'm not going under, I'm going over. Amen. So, last week, and that was just a little extra, okay? Because it kind of like went along with it. And, and I'm not going to be real long. I was kind of like, I was, this was a longer message, but we'll just <laughs> condense it and pick it up next week. But anyway, so we, we looked, last week we looked at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and though he was rich, yet for your sakes became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. And that word rich is the word plutocrat, wealthy. God wants you rich. He wants you rich spiritually, and he wants you rich materially. Not so you could say, hey, man, I'm the big man on the street. You know, look what I got. I'm just, you know, I got a 100-foot yacht. Ain't I cool? No, God don't care. If you want to use your 100-foot yacht to bring food to some island, that's great. He was talking about this ministry. Keith Moore gave them... I don't know how big that boat was. Gave them a ship, like not 100 foot, like maybe 200 foot, 150 foot ship, so they can go from island to island, bringing the gospel to the people. Keith Moore, his ministry bought them the boat. Is it, is it, I don't know how big, how big is that boat. It's over 100 foot, I know that. But, uh, yeah, you know, so people go, oh, Keith Morrells, he talks about it's money. But he gives away more money than you'll ever see in your lifetime. Maybe. Maybe. You don't have to, but that's the truth. So, <laughs> but, uh, and then we looked at, so he wants us to be rich. And, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And last week we talked about that that was just a God wants you to have a really good journey in life. Amen. I mean, he wants you to be happy. He wants you to be content. You're going to face challenges that, that goes without saying it's going to happen. Whether you're a Christian, a believer, or a non-believer, you're going to face a challenge. And it's all about attitude, how you face the challenge. All right, so, so we started this series getting from day to day to abundance, and God really wants us to have abundance. We looked at Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 to 20, and we said that Jesus went to the cross to provide for us salvation, healing, but he also provided uh, financial prosperity for us. Unfortunately, a lot of us are not walking in that prosperity that God wants for us. Because we have this attitude, I owe, I owe, off to work, I go. You know, Keith Moore says it this way. You making a living or are you making a giving? Think about that one for a while. Are you making a living or are you making a giving? I'll never forget, he said that when I was in Bible school. And that's before ever you went, you know. But that's a long time before anyway. went. So, again, it's to preach the gospel to a lost and dying world. That's what we looked about. And, and, we, and Jesus promised to Israelites and to all of us, he says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse uh, 1 to 14, he says, if you're willing and obedient, you will have the blessings that are in the first 14 verses. And, you know, last week I said one of those verses says he'll have you blessed coming in and going out. And it was funny because the other day my wife says, you know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I says, that's okay. God's got you blessed coming in and going out. Don't matter if you don't know which way you're going, he'll still bless you as long as you're willing and obedient to his word. Amen. It's all about his word. All right. Amen. Praise God. So, and then we looked at Jericho. Jericho was that great gateway that Israel had to go through. And we said, we all have Jerichos in our life, and we have to face those Jerichos. You see, getting from, uh, you know, people will look like a, a person like a, a Kenneth Copeland or a Jesse Duplantis or, or, or a Keith Moore or, or just lots of these ministers and going, boy, I want to be where they're at. Well, the thing we missed to understand, they just didn't get there. 
Kenneth Hagin didn't get to where that ministry is overnight. He was faithful. You know, I, got, I received a text this morning from Pastor Hagin. Texts me every Sunday morning. And, and, and this is what the text said. It says, remember, stay focused. Do not let distractions get your focus off what God has called us to accomplish. And that just goes along with what we were saying this morning, the word my wife had and what Pastor Eddie had. We need to stay focused because there's a lot of distractions out there in the world today that will get us off, just get us off going in the wrong direction. So, again, Jericho was this major city of defense for the land of Canaan. Now, we know that the Israel, God promised them to the Israelites. God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, he says, see, I have given you that place. That's past tense. He already had given it to them. He gave it to them 40 years prior to that when they went in, the, the, in Numbers chapter 13, when they sent the 10, 12 spies out and 10 came back that were knuckleheads and jerks and convinced everybody it was better to be in Egypt living under a socialistic society than it was to be free. I'd rather be free in the wilderness than under tyranny. And they were so stupid. Man, they really got quiet in here. You're waiting for me to go political. You're waiting for me to just to go political. Well, all those, that generation was a bunch of liberals because they want to go back to Egypt and be under socialism. Except for two guys, Joshua and Caleb. And guess what happened? Those people, I did it anyway, didn't I? Those people all died in the wilderness because of their disobedience to what God was trying to bring them to freedom, unbelief, doubt and unbelief. So we all have these, and here's the best part. Second Peter chapter one, verse three or four is a little extra, okay? It says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So we've already been given all things that pertain to life and godliness, and the word life there means the material things we need in life, okay? And godliness is being a godly person, it's what it's talking about. And he goes on to say, through the knowledge of him. So again, it's a growing experience. Keith Moore didn't get where he's at. Joshua didn't get where they at. That was all Israelites didn't get where they were going. They all had to grow. So you're not going to get there overnight. And you will make faith mistakes along the way. But that's okay. But he says it's through the knowledge of him. Well, what's that knowledge? It's that personal, intimate knowledge of God. And the only way you learn about who God is and what God is all about is by reading your word, the word of God, is by reading the Bible. You don't get it from watching television. You don't get it from reading magazines. You don't even get it from reading books, although books are good to read about the gospel. You get about getting in the word and reading the word because the word is what speaks to your heart. Hello? So we're going to move to another part here for a couple minutes this morning. And, uh, and we're going to talk about the wilderness a little bit. All right? Jericho was the gateway between the wilderness of Sinai and the abundance of Canaan. And uh, I've heard uh, preachers say that things like the wilderness travels of the, and they get real anointed. I guess, that the, the, the travels the children of Israel were in the land of lack. When they were going through the wilderness, they were in the land of lack. So if that's the land of lack, it just stands to reason Canaan was the land of plenty, and people are really good with that. But on the other hand, I look at it a little bit different. Okay, now that I got your attention, all right. We're going to see that the wilderness was not such a land of lack, okay? The wilderness was a place where God provided every need that Israel had, 
every need was supplied in the wilderness. Okay? Everything. In the midst of great difficulty, God met every need they ever had. That don't sound like a land of lack to me. Does it? Think about it. It was a, but it, what it was, it was a place of preparation, a place for the promised land. The land of lack was Egypt. Not the wilderness, man. You know, in Deuteronomy, if you have your Bible, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8, because we see something that's pretty interesting. Deuteronomy, because it mentions Egypt, mentions the promised land, and it mentions the wilderness. And we just have to take a look at this real quick, okay? And I hope you're getting something out of this stuff, because this stuff will bless you if you put it to practice in your life. You know, and I always hear, I'm going to preach that message, why are you holding your bag so tight? Eat it up. You ain't taking, somebody, where was I at there? Oh, oh, I was on the boardwalk yesterday, and there's this guy that rides his bike. And he worked for us for years up there, and he ran even a parking lot. And this one lady that was there, uh, Linda, says, he has got more money than you could imagine. He drives his, pedals his bike everywhere. He always stops and says, hello, how you doing? He's like a, and I says, really? I says, yeah, it takes his bike everywhere, has more money in the bank, banked every penny, don't have any kids, don't like kids, don't like this. And I looked at her, I said, you know what the thing about that whole deal is? And she goes, what? And you got to understand Linda, okay? Linda is probably one of the funniest people you'll ever meet. I says, you know what, Linda? I ain't never seen a U-Haul follow a hearse yet. And she went, I never thought of that. So he could have it all banked up. He ain't got nobody to leave it to. Give him my address. Because we'll put it to good work. All right? We'll spread the gospel with it. It's amazing, though. But anyway, Deuteronomy chapter 28. You get there? Eight. I said that. I mean eight. I said 28 before. Did I say it again? Chapter 8. Yeah. He, and he says here in chapter 8, he says, You shall remember the Lord your God led you all the way through these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you, to know what was in your heart. What's in your heart? Okay. Then it says, You should know it. I'm going down to verse 5. Oh, I'm just going to read verse 5. I'm just going to read down. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, the Lord your God chastens you. So therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, waters, of fountains, and springs that flow out of the valleys of hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines, fig trees, pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land which you will eat bread without scarcity in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of the hills you can dig copper. That's talking about the land of Canaan. Then it goes, when you have eaten in our full, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, his statutes, which I command you. Least you have eaten in our full and have built beautiful homes and dwell in them. And when your herd, when and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied, God's in a multiplying business, isn't he? And all that you have multiplied, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you from the land of Egypt, 
from the house of bondage who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty, a land which there was no water, who brought water for you out of a flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that, that he might humble you, that you might test you to do you good in the end. People say, God tests us with good. He don't test you with bad things. He wants to see what you're going to do with that extra money you get. You're going to stick it in your pocket or you're going to give some back. You're going to help the gospel go forth. You know, we trust in our 401ks and all this other stuff. Bro, that stuff could go like, I, I talked to a guy the other day. He's a very wealthy man up on the boardwalk. My wife knows him. And he says, man, my, my investments are going through the roof. And I looked at him. I said, yeah, but in four months, they can go in the toilet too. And that's the truth. So he's deciding whether he's going to take it out and go dig a hole and put it in the ground. He said, at least it'll stay the same. I wanted to say, bro, these people are just concerned about how we're going to make it through tomorrow. I know how I'm making it through tomorrow. <laughs> I got the greater one living on the inside of me, man. Anyway, so Egypt represents the non-believer who operates in the world system. That's really what Egypt is all about. You know, that could be anything from banks to governments right down, right down the line. And you see it more and more in the day that we live in, all right? We expect the government to provide for our needs. People are all upset because Trump's only going to give them 400 and 600. Do you know we couldn't get anybody to work? Why do they want to work? When they're making $1,200 a week. Real big incentive there. And people say, well, there you are getting political. I'm not getting political. I'm just telling you the truth. That's Egypt. Hello? Shout me down because I'm preaching real good. And, and what happens is they want to give us more so they can steal it back. Through taxes. Why aren't other churches talking about this? Because we're talking about our trust should be in God. Not the government. They're here for one reason. To see that we prosper, not take it from us. That's their job. Their job is to protect that some enemy don't shoot some bomb over here. When we, you know, they had that PPP thing, whatever it was there back when this thing, and we, we had a little meeting, and we just, I said, I ain't taking the government's money because then they got their foot in my door. Amen. Ain't happening. If God can't see this puppy through, then we just shut the door and go on down the road. Well, look what we did. Amen. We remodeled the joint Amen. without their money. Getting nervous, you two, three, you two are sweating there. We're good. Okay. <laughs> anyway, and 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 they abuse the the power that we have given them. But that's how the world works. Satan controls the world. He's the god of this world. But when we chose, when we chose to leave Egypt and crossed the Red Sea, we became a child of God. Hello? Listen, we're in the world, no doubt about it, but we're not of the world. And yes, we have to work, we have to earn a living. Yes, unfortunately, we have to pay taxes. But our trust is not in the way the world's doing things. Our trust is in God, El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. 
So getting back to the wilderness where God took care of everything. See, it doesn't matter how bad it gets. God is always going to see us through. Hallelujah. How many, and now some of you don't remember this because you were too young, but in the 70s when we had the gas shortages. Now you're all telling your age, but I never worried about gas. Ever. God knows where the gas is. That was just another way like to keep you under their thumb. When we're really free. I got nervous this morning. I called the pastor. I said, you know what, man? You know what the governor did? He made another rule. No more gatherings of 25 people, Eddie. I didn't see that part. I just read the part where there's only 25 people. I wanted to go to Trenton <laughs> with a bat. <laughs> but anyway, the wilderness, through the wilderness, really just represents spiritual maturity. And you know what? Everybody has to be spiritually immature. Everybody be, is a baby Christian when they first get saved. And, and, and along the way, we make mistakes because we're trying to figure out what it doesn't mean to be in Christ. And we think we got it nailed and we try it and boom, it won't work. All right. But trying to figure out how to live according to his word, trying to follow the Holy Spirit in our life, you know, how to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's all part of the growing phase. That's why you're never going to just go from here. Babies just don't get born and become teenagers. Oof, had to give him back. I was one of the girls who works up on the boardwalk. They always talk about that, find a nice Italian man. She goes, yeah, when my kids are born, I'm putting them away and taking them back when they're 21. She goes, I work with 70. 13 year olds up here, and I'm not about to go through that. With my kids, <laughs> that's what he said. But, uh, but anyway, God will supernaturally supply everything for us when we're first born again. That's what He does. The way we supply for our kids when they're little, they can't do it themselves. And for the children of Israel, the wilderness was their training ground. This is a spot where they learn how to trust God. Every day as he supplied their daily needs. They were trusting God. Hallelujah. He gave, listen, he gave them fire at night because the wilderness gets cold. Then in the hot, extreme coldness, and during the day it would be extremely hot, so he gave them clouds. He gave them uh, uh, food. He got food out of a rock, water out of a rock. Their clothes never wore out. And their shoes grew with them. He took care of them every step of the way. They crossed the Red Sea. The first thing they complained about was water. They weren't in there 30, 48 hours, and they were complaining. We don't got no water. Took us out of here. I'm thinking like, and I read these stories, I, I, I think of them in Pastor Anthony's brain, which is, Abby normal sometimes. <laughs> anyway, I go, three days later, they're complaining about water. Why didn't you just take a couple pailfuls when you went through the Red Sea? That he just drowned everybody in the, in, the, in the water. You're worrying about he parted the sea. You walk through it. You run on dry land. You're running out of water, and you're complaining. They failed the first test. And we do that all the time. All of us. Every day, God would send manna from heaven. Manna from heaven. Not an abundance. Not to overflowing. Just enough. 
See, because it's the wilderness of just enough. You know why it was just enough? Because if he gave them more than they needed, somebody would have come up with a scam on how to make money off the extra manna they had. So he's not prospering a lot of people because, man, honestly, you couldn't handle it. I love this, you know, that clearinghouse commercial? Oh, I'm going to give 10% to God. How many people in here, how many people you know that, how many Christians you know that won that? The million dollar clearinghouse thing. God knows if we could handle it or not. God knows if you're going to write a $100,000 check right off the bat, or you're going to go, Phew. I'm going to get me a Maserati. I'm going to buy me a new house. I'm going to buy a condo in California, in Hawaii. And then when it's all spent, you got 100000 left, you'll write a check for ten. And say, I gave it, I gave it to God. And you didn't give it the right way, you know what I mean? Because if you gave him the hundred off the top, you'd be able to buy two condos in Hawaii. One to let somebody use that don't have nothing, and one for yourself. Anyway, but he would do that. They need it. And if they took more than they needed, they would get worms. The manna would get worms. But here's the interesting thing about God. On the Sabbath... He let them take enough for the next day because they couldn't go out and get the manna. So from Friday to Saturday, they got a little, they got enough for two days. And it didn't go bad. The wilderness of just don't sound like a land of lack to me. I mean, look how great is that? I get up in the morning, food. God, I'm tired of manna. Okay, birds. Got enough birds? <laughs> oh, you want to go back to the manna? Okay. You wanted to go on keto? Now you want to go on carbs. What? Make up your mind. And really, I've, I've just believed the bread, the manna, represents the bread of life, Jesus Christ. We have to go to God every day. Get orders from headquarters. Give us... Give, give, the Lord, give us our daily bread. That's our bread for today. The Word of God. And it, that's what it represents. It represents the Word of God. So their only task was to collect, prepare, and eat. But here's the interesting part. God just didn't deliver Israel, and he didn't deliver you just so we, he could provide our needs the rest of our life and not expect us to do anything, all right? He wants us to grow up. Everybody say, grow up. Grow up, learn his word, learn about prosperity, learn about giving, learn how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit when God tells you to do things. And people say, why? Because he wants more than a wilderness life for us. He wants us to be more than living from day to day and mouth to mouth. Although he's supplying it all, he wants you to have more than enough because he's the great El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough. And why does he want us to have more than enough? So we can bless other people. You know, we, you've heard us tell stories all the time. And, you know, we'll go out to dinner. We'll sit. Like, we heard him tell the story about the three nuns in Florida. You know, when we were out to dinner, I didn't know there were three nuns. I just said there were three old ladies. And they were nice. They were. Yeah, when you think about it, yeah. They were elderly. Anyway, but I just said there were three elderly ladies. They were sitting there enjoying themselves, having their steak and all this other stuff. And, and I'm thinking, man, should I pick up their tab or not? So sometimes you don't get a clear of the Holy Spirit. But then the Holy Spirit sends in the 
somebody off the bench, your wife. <laughs> and she goes, I feel impressed to buy their dinner. Okay, so now it was a confirmation, really. And we did, just to find out they were three Dominican nuns. And they, they, were, they were like shocked because they're in the ministry all their lives. They've given up everything. And no one's ever sat down and decided to pay for their dinner. And, you know, they were bringing out American Express cards, so it wasn't like they were destitute. You know what I'm saying? But they were just so happy. As a matter of fact, they had already paid. So I said, give me the checks. So I, and I went in my pocket and got cash. I said, here, that's for you, that's for you, and that's for you. Did we not do that? And they were just blessed, man. And then they found out we were pastors. And they, they were really blown away then. Uh, but anyway. But so what happens, but as we grow, and I'll bring this to a quick end here. As we grow, we are a place where we're ready for more responsibility. More responsibility. I mean, I want to do things for God. I don't want him always doing things for me. It's my turn, you know? It's my turn to bless God, do something for him. I want to show forth his supernatural power. I want people to say, why are you doing that? Yeah, I got to tell you a story real quick. This is many years ago. When I first started working on a boardwalk, uh, my family don't hurt for any money, okay? They're like, they got a lot of money. And, uh, you know, like on like this and like this, materially wise, they're up here and I'm here. Spiritually wise, I'm here and they're here. Okay? So at the end of the summer, my nephew walks up to me and he hands me a wad of money. He says, That's for you, Uncle. I said, Oh, thanks. So I decided I'm going to take them all to dinner. The whole enchilada. And they were, why am I doing that? That's what they wanted to know. My brother goes, why are you doing this? Are you crazy? You can't afford that. I said, that's what you think, brother. And so I took them to dinner. My two brothers and their wives and all their children, not their grandkids, but all their children. I think it was about 15 of us. And I paid. And they couldn't understand why I did. I says, I just wanted to bless you. So now my two brothers, they got like, they start feeling bad. And I walk out of the restaurant, they come running over. They start giving me the money back for the food. I said, I don't want your money. I said, I wanted to do that. I said, and we have this problem all the time with them, too, because we'll go out to dinner down in Florida, and they insist. Finally, we went, where do we want one night? I said, listen, I don't care what you eat. I'm buying. What are you, crazy? No, but, and, and that's like, they look at that. You know, and, and real simply, they could, that's nothing for them. They take people out to dinner all the time. But God wants us to move from a place where we could bless people. We heard a start-off club. Ed, Pastor Eddie, you can come up there with the music ministry. Yeah, you know, you still you do. Okay, well, let me tell you one more story, okay? <laughs> we were out to dinner last night, and someone told us a story about how they were coming home from somewhere, and they had, oh, they were coming back from Brooklyn. That's where they were coming back from. And they had $7 in their pocket, and they wanted a cup of coffee. So they stopped at a McDonald's, and there was a guy out there asking for money. And people were walking by this guy. He was asking for money. Nobody would give him any money. So this person walks up there and says, listen, what's, what do you need? He goes, I haven't eaten in three days. He said, come on inside. I'll buy you dinner. I'll buy you. I'm not, he didn't give him the money, but he took him inside, and he bought him 
you know, whatever it was, and it took the whole seven dollars that he was using to pay the bridge to go over the bridge back to New Jersey. So, he, so, so there he is, and he says, people in the place that all walked by this guy and said nasty things to him were amazed that I bought him food and he was sitting there eating the food. They were all going, the guy was really hungry. And we looked at him last night and we said, you never know, you could entertain, you entertain an angels and don't even know it. So you don't, when you get that prompting to do, like even with this offering for, uh, that we just took for this ministry, if you felt impressed, and it was really funny because this morning I was, I do, you know, we, I do online giving. I would, did not know he was going to do that. And, and, I, and I go down, oh, tithe. And I said, missions. This is before you called me. And I filled out a little missions thing. And I just didn't send it because I didn't know where we were going with that at that point in time. But uh, it's, that's the Holy Spirit. Those are the little tests along the way that God's going to see, are they faithful enough to do what I'm telling them to do? Because trust me, the devil ain't going to tell you to give nothing away. Okay, he's going to tell you to take something, but not tell you to give it away. So what we described here really is a, a believer who has walked through the wilderness of just enough and now has grown to matureness that's ready to be used, a vessel of honor. But there's still another part we got to talk about, and probably next week we'll talk. If I don't talk about it next week, we'll, we'll see. I'll discuss this with Pastor Ray. But there's still another part that you have to do because there's still this big thing out there called Jericho that every single one of us face in our lives on a daily basis. And you remember last week we talked about Gilgal and how for seven days they went back to Gilgal. And that's, it's, it's key to getting rid of, rid of those fears. Remember, your fear is more afraid of you than anything. The devil have, you know, fear is afraid of you. Because once you hook into the word of God, fear stopped dead in its tracks. It stopped dead in its tracks once you, he's, it's a fear is afraid of you. Hello. It's a spirit. It's an evil spirit. And God didn't give us that evil spirit of fear, but he gave us a better spirit, love, power, and a sound mind. And it all comes from here. Can you say amen? Let's bow our heads and pray. Praise God. If you're watching on live stream, we love you. We'd like to invite you out to one of our services. Come on out. We have a good time. Amen. And if you're here out there and you've never received Jesus as your Savior, he loves you, man. If you're, if you're living in Egypt, God wants to at least get you to the wilderness. The wilderness of just enough because he wants to bless you, but you have to receive Jesus. You have to go through the Red Sea. You have to be born again. You have to believe that Jesus Christ, number one, is the Son of God. Number two, lived on this earth, was crucified, died, was buried, and rose on the third day. That's the prerequisite of getting born again, believing that. And once that happens, the Holy Spirit comes on the inside of you, and he'll, try, he'll want to lead you, and that's where the growing part comes in. That's the trusting part. So if that's you and you're listening today and you want to receive Jesus, just say this simple prayer. Say, God, I come to you today. In the name of your son, Jesus, I believe he was from you. I believe he lived on this earth. I believe he hung on a cross. He died and he rose again. And I receive him into my heart. And I thank you that I just crossed out of Egypt through the Red Sea and on, on my way to the promised land. And Father God, I praise you for it and thank you for it in Jesus' name. If that's the first time you ever prayed a prayer like that, there's people monitoring our Facebook stream. Just click in there. 
they'll let you know. They'll let us know. We'll send you some information.